Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gay Gerard and I'm your host and I'm delighted that you're here today. I have an incredible guest. Edith Agustin is a raw food health coach and she's here to share her story of why she transitioned from a vegan diet over to mostly eating raw fruits and vegetables and how that in impacted her health and wellness. Later in the episode, she's also going to share her experience on the medical medium 369 cleanse, the importance of celery juice, the benefits of eating sprouts and how to include those in your diet to gain the maximum nutrition. And she's also here to share tips and tricks to help you transition to over to eating a higher amount of raw food in your own personal diet to boost your energy levels. And so make sure you stick around to the end because she's got some incredible advice to share. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Edith. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's just get straight into it. What first attracted you to raw foods? How did you discover it? Well, so I had already been vegan for a few years at this point, and I think this had happened maybe about three or four years ago. I came across a documentary, and I believe it was called Just Raw Vegan. Um, I'll have to look it up to make sure that that's the correct title and I'll send it to you. But it just really inspired me because the people in the documentary looked so vibrant. Um, they made it sound relatively easy. They claimed to have a lot of energy. They looked like they had a lot of energy. And I had already been vegan for a, a number of years at that point, but I didn't notice a huge difference in my health. So when I came to the vegan lifestyle, I, I wasn't struggling with a health issue. And when I transitioned into fully plant-based, I didn't really notice an improvement in my health. And intuitively, I just knew that there was another level um, to, to health. I knew that I could feel better in my physical body. And it wasn't that I didn't feel good in my physical body. It was just that I knew that I could feel even better, that I could have more energy, that I could feel lighter on my feet. Um, and so when I first saw that, I, I kind of had an aha moment. It really, it, it seemed like a sign for me that I needed to try it. And uh, I just got really fascinated and started looking into it and started incorporating more raw foods very slowly. This didn't happen overnight when I first went vegan. I did that overnight. That was very easy for me. However, transitioning from like 40 to 50% raw foods to 80 to 100% raw foods, that has been much more challenging for me personally. Um, and so that has taken me a few years to get to. So it's only been about a year that I've been eating 80 to 100 percent raw and i believe the definition of a raw foodist is i think 75 or 80 percent raw food so you don't even have to be 100 percent to be classified a raw vegan which i find interesting but mm. i do find that when i am eating fully raw that i have more energy i feel better um, my digestion is better so i'm aiming to get there um, but I've been taking my time with it. And I think that's a really nice way to do it. Um, you know, you can really appreciate the process and uh, enjoy and have the time to learn how to make the foods so that you can enjoy them because it is quite different. Mm, I agree completely. And so what were some of the challenges that you faced or that you, you know, are still facing that, um, tr you know, trying to sustain a raw, you know, mostly raw foods? Um. Nothing health-wise. Health-wise, it's easy. Um, it's I'm a foodie, so I'm a double Taurus, and I'm a Kapha in Ayurveda. So I'm like, and I'm a generator in human design. So like every aspect of how I'm built is like designed to enjoy food. Like it's one of like my love languages, and uh, you know, it takes time to make raw food as flavorful and as or to learn how to I should say um, and it takes time for your taste buds to adapt you know um, I have been able to create some very delicious meals but it has taken time it takes practice um, and uh, yeah so I think that's been the only challenge to be quite honest with you in terms of health everything is better when you're eating more raw so 
I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that uh, I can kick the, the cravings for any cooked food in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I can, I completely relate. That's for sure. I'm definitely a foodie as well. And yeah, it's yeah. interesting, you know, when you're going from, you're looking at all the different foods that are available and your favorite foods, you know, to try and make those raw vegan, it does take a few goes, a few tries to get that right to a point where they're, they're flavorful and they're satisfying and you don't miss you know, the other foods that yeah. you had. So let's wind it back a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you grew up and your backstory. Okay, so I'm originally from Hungary. Mm -hmm. um, my parents and I immigrated from, well, we first went from Hungary to Austria and then to the US. Um, when I was seven, we got to the US mm -hmm. and I grew up in Seattle, Washington in the Pacific Northwest. It's absolutely beautiful there. I really, really miss it. However, I was always craving sunshine. Um, so in 2020, I got the intuitive pull to move and uh, I went to Arizona and lived there for about a year. And then about a year and a half ago, I moved to Florida and I'm getting ready to move again. So life is an adventure. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's amazing. And so who did the cooking in your house when you were growing up? Did you have any sort of special, you know, types of foods coming from Hungary? Yeah, my mom is an amazing cook. Mm -hmm. So she, she has always cooked from scratch. Um, so I had a really great upbringing in terms of food. Um, it wasn't until... I was in maybe high school uh, that I started to eat processed foods. Uh, before then, my mom cooked like every single day. She it, it was just ingrained in her. And uh, we even had gardens pretty much everywhere we lived. So we had um, fresh produce all the time, uh, which was really nice. So I'm really grateful for that. Mm. Um, we also had animals at one point, And that's how that was like my first uh imprint in terms of oh wow I didn't know that's where meat comes from you know I think I was 11 years old and I had made friends with the animals that we had and it was really challenging for me to see my parents um, slaughter them in front of me because that's how they grew up they grew up in a you know eastern European um, communist country um, and that was kind of the norm, like everyone had animals um, who lived on the land and that's how they grew up. And so they ended up um, slaughtering animals for food. And when I saw that, it, it really resonated and it, it, it was probably like the first seed that had been planted um, that I really, you know, gravitated to later in life. And I remembered that suffering um and uh i even back then when they tried to feed me the meat i actually ended up throwing it out the window because i couldn't eat it because it it was so disgusting to me and then i felt horrible that i was you know petting that pig or chasing those chickens and playing with them because that's what kids do you know you don't want to we don't have as humans we don't have that instinct to um you know go out and jump on the animal and kill it for food and and as a child we still have those like normal instincts, you know, we haven't been conditioned by society. And so mm. for me, um, that really, that really um, impacted me. And uh, yeah, so I, I ate um, really well uh, up until about high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, what teenagers do, they go out to lunch with their friends, or at least here in the US, we go out to lunch with friends and you go to the fast food places. Um, so my diet really suffered at that time. And then I, I noticed that I was gaining weight. And so my body constitution that I referenced earlier is kapha in Ayurveda. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the doshas. I am. But yes. And are. I'm also kapha as well. Oh, really? Yes. You look like you're, you're a little pitta too. Ah, uh, yes, face. I do. I'm yeah. on the edge of both. Yeah. I have a lot yeah, of, yeah, yeah. yes. And I a lot of energy. <laughs> How do you yeah, tell I that? That's amazing. Um, you look like you have a heart-shaped face, right? And uh, your nose, uh, your the hair color, um, okay. and your hair is fine. Typically, pitas have fine hair. We have like more hair, um, kafas, and we have, yeah, we have a rounder face. 
we have um, like full earlobes. We have um, a more curvy body typically. Yeah. Um, and we gain weight much easier. So I noticed I was gaining weight in high school eating the fast food. Um, and so I actually started dialing it back when I was 18. I started bringing salads to, to school for my lunch. My very last year in high school, I started bringing apples, um, things that I thought would help me to improve my health and lose weight at the time. And then my early 20s, um, I adopted like a whole food diet. Um, so I, I was pretty healthy and um, at a, like a healthy body weight for my body type all the way through after that. So um, that's, I think that's why I didn't notice a huge change in my health when I went plant-based because I was already eating um, lots of fruits and vegetables before I was fully vegan. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Yeah, I think it's interesting. So at what point did you realize that food can heal? When did, did you have a particular a moment in time where something just changed within your body composition or the way that you felt? Was it mental clarity? What was your experience? Yeah. So I did have one health issue at the age of 30. <clears throat> I was in a really high stress job. I was working anywhere from 60 to 70 hours a week. And then I also had a um unhealthy relationship at the time and uh I was just in a lot of stress and I started having digestive issues from the combination of being in a bad relationship and then the stressful job um and at the time I was consuming dairy and gluten and eggs and uh I went to the doctor at the time and they met with me for about five minutes didn't ask me any questions about my lifestyle mm. or my stress levels. They just wrote me a prescription for pharmaceutical drugs to treat an ulcer, but I didn't have an ulcer and they never diagnosed me with an ulcer. They just thought that a medication that's supposed to treat an ulcer would treat whatever was going on with me. But I intuitively knew that that wasn't correct. And uh, I just began researching and I found a naturopathic doctor and she put me on um, an elimination diet mm -hmm. um, after she did some food sensitivity tests on me. And we discovered that I couldn't digest dairy or eggs um, or gluten. And so I cut those three out of my diet and lifestyle and my health improved drastically. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any digestive issues after that. So yeah, that was about the age of 30 and that didn't take long to fix. That didn't take very long. And I ended that relationship and I got out of that job. So right. that, that those two combined were huge. Um, and then I enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition because I came across that throughout my research at the time. And, uh, and yeah, that, that really changed my life. And that's how I found plant-based nutrition is through the IIN program. All right. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that program. So whereabouts is it based yeah. and what does it include? It's in New York and mm -hmm. it's a health coaching um, training program. I absolutely love it. Um, it gives you the green light into like alternative health, holistic health that has nothing to do with becoming a doctor or a nurse, because I'd always been interested um, in health and nutrition, but I didn't want to be a doctor or a nurse. And when I graduated um, high school in 2000, I was enrolling in colleges. We didn't really have any like alternative medicine or holistic health that we could choose to study. And so I ended up studying journalism and I graduated with um, a communications degree from the University of Washington. And then I started working um, and I just kind of thought health and wellness is just gonna be a hobby for me. And uh, when I found IIN, I realized, oh, I could become a health coach. I could do these other things. and that was another sign. It was like a, another aha moment. And mm -hmm. I enrolled quickly. And um, in the program, what I love about it is they, they introduce you to a variety of modalities and you can kind of gravitate towards what interests you. And for me, that was Ayurveda and plant-based nutrition. And uh, so I just uh, continued my own studies after that. 
and started coaching people and started uh, taking steps to leave the career path that I was on so that I could make room for, for this career path. And it's probably been the best decision of my life. Amazing. That's so great. Sort of where did juices and smoothing smoothies come into play? Um, I read on your Instagram that you did um, the medical medium 369 cleanse. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what that program is and how it yeah, impacted yeah. you? Way before I was vegan, my mom and I got to the Jack Lane juicer mm -hmm. um, just because we wanted to try it. I think we might have seen one of those infomercials that, that might have been one of the first like you know, commercial juicers that the media was um, showing. And so we got that juicer and I think maybe I was early, early to mid twenties at the time. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't juicing every day, but we were juicing like every week. And uh, when I got my own apartment, I, I got another juicer and I was juicing every week there, but I was still eating the omnivore diet, but I, I just enjoyed juicing. Um, and then smoothies probably came a couple of years after that. And then I discovered the medical medium, I would say, let's see, 2019. So about four years ago. Um, and at first I was like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? This is strange, you know? How does he know all of this information? Um, but that was, uh, that was, yeah, I ever I had already had my spiritual awakening, so it did resonate on some level, but um, it was still a little bit odd. Like I think when people first find his information, they're taken aback by the wealth of information that exists on his page and in mm -hmm. his book. Definitely. Um, so I uh, I was a little bit slow to integrate it, but I thought, well why not try this celery juice thing? And so I started making it um, a few times a week and I did notice improvements in my digestion um, because uh, my body type, again, to circle back, whenever we're unbalanced, we, mm -hmm. we become constipated. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, um, you know, life is sometimes stressful. And so sometimes that would happen to me. And so I was always seeking for, for things um, that would improve my digestion. And mm -hmm. so I did really notice an improvement with celery juice. And so I was incorporating that. I might've ordered the first book um, mm -hmm. and then I started reading. And uh, I think it's taken me a few years to really get to the point of using his protocols on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the last maybe two, two years, I think I've been very diligent. Um, but before then I was just kind of dabbling. Um, and now I do the morning cleanse pretty much every day, which is lemon water, celery juice, and no fats. So just lemon water, um, about 24 to 32 ounces upon waking. Mm -hmm. And then the protocol is to wait at least 15 to 30 minutes before you have the celery juice. So typically what I do is I get up, I have the lemon water, I take the celery out of the fridge so it kind of gets to room temperature. I do my meditation and by the time my meditation is done, it's ready for me to juice the celery. So then I'll have the celery juice on its own. So you want to have it on its own okay. um, because the micro cluster salts in the celery juice mm -hmm. need to work that way in the body without any additives. So you don't want to add anything else. Right. You can have a second juice later, um, you know, but the first juice after the lemon water should be straight celery according to his protocol mm -hmm. and I do notice a difference that when I stick to that I do feel better my digestion is better my energy levels are better and I honestly do believe in his teachings it really resonates with me on a soul level and if you if you take the time to read the books mm. you will see that uh, everything is very logical. So he's just telling people to eat fruits, vegetables, wild foods, and herbs. Mm -hmm. um, and by wild foods, I mean like wild blueberries and aloe vera. So it's, it's completely vegan. And this is another thing that I want to highlight, if that's okay with you. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like he gets um, a bad reputation because um, from the vegan community, because they say he doesn't you know, allocate or he doesn't recommend being vegan, right? 
he works with everybody, but all of the protocols are vegan. So That's interesting. Yeah. So he doesn't recommend eating animal products whatsoever. He just says, if you choose to, you, you know, you can still heal. However, you've got to incorporate all of these plant foods, all of these protocols, mm -hmm. um, and leave that animal protein for the very last meal and, and only consume a very small amount if you choose to, but he doesn't say you should Okay. all of the, all of the medicinal protocols. And in fact, he says that those foods are not going to heal you. You okay. can heal despite um, consuming those. So it's a different message um, mm. rather than what people think. And I, I just think not enough people read the books. You know, they just judge mm. based on what they see. And uh, I feel like we're just in a scrolling mentality um, in this day and age. And nobody takes the time to read. And the books are big. Yes, like I know. I've seen, seen them. Yeah. yeah. I'm done. I would yeah. love to read one. Yeah. It's on my list. Yeah. <laughs> so I just encourage people to actually read them. And then, mm. and then you will see that it's actually, you know, like people, I think, uh, are turned off by the fact that he gets his information from spirit. So they think it's mm. some sort of hocus pocus, right? But it's just fruits, vegetables and herbs. Okay, mm. so it's not anything crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I absolutely love his information. And I, I think it just cuts through all the noise. So mm. This is the other reason I, I follow it is because there's so there's so many diverse opinions out there, um, even in the vegan community, and it can be very confusing for people. Uh, and so if you find something that really resonates with you, you know, on a soul level, then you don't have to worry about all the noise and all the mess out there. You know, you just stick to what you believe in and create a diet and lifestyle utilizing that information and if it works and and he has healed thousands of people i mean if you look at all the case studies mm -hmm. the information works and so yeah i stand Brilliant. behind it 100 percent. oh that's fantastic and so with the 369 cleanse is that something you do for a specific amount of time or is it just every day yeah yeah so that's a nine day cleanse oh he right has okay multiple yeah, he has multiple options. So there's um, the original, there's the simplified, and there's the advanced. And the advanced is fully raw. Mm -hmm. And that's the one I just did recently. And I think I'm going to do it again. I'm deciding whether or not to do that cleanse or there's a, a heavy metal detox cleanse in the new Brain Saver book. Well, that sounds um, and that's, interesting. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. That's 15 I mean, days. that's 15 days. And that's going to be fully raw vegan as well. Mm -hmm. And so the cleanses are, are all vegan people too. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And so I'm going to do that one very soon. I'll be documenting it, I think, along the way. Oh, fantastic. That's great. And so what do you typically eat in a day now? So I start the day with the lemon water, the celery juice, mm -hmm. and then I sometimes go and work out immediately after that. Mm -hmm. um, or if I have a little bit of work I need to get done first, then I'll have some sort of a fruit meal, either, either a mono meal or a fruit smoothie with some greens in it. Um, sometimes I'll have the heavy metal detox smoothie. Um, which is another medical medium protocol. Typically, that's um, a really great way to start the day. And uh, it's actually really delicious as well. What's in uh, one? So, so that one um, consists of two cups of wild blueberries, mm -hmm. um, two bananas, uh, one cup of cilantro, and one teaspoon of spirulina, one teaspoon of barley grass juice powder, and then a small handful of Atlantic dulse. It's a sea vegetable. All right. And then one orange. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah, it's actually really it's good. Great. I mean, some people have a hard time with cilantro, but uh, oh, you I get love used it. to it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. It's kind, of, yeah. it's kind of, it's a warming herb. I feel like it's kind of aromatic and spicy. So no, mm -hmm. it definitely, it would go with the orange and the, and the blueberries for sure. How do you manage to maintain, I mean, well, eating such a high volume of raw food, how do you ensure that you get enough nutrients in your diet every day? Is it something that you just have faith that will balance out or do you make a conscious effort to like, okay, I've had so, you know, a percentage of fruit. Now it's time to have some greens or some nuts and seeds. What's your approach? 
Yeah, I don't worry about it, um, to be honest. So I'll have that um, that smoothie um, maybe half half the week, um, and then either a different smoothie um, for lunch. So the, they're all going to have some sort of greens in it. Mm -hmm. And I also like to incorporate superfoods like aloe vera gel, mm -hmm. which is another wild food, um, spirulina, um, even in in different smoothies, um, camu camu, like these different um, superfood powders I like to use. Uh, and then my dinner is always a huge salad mm. uh, with like six, seven, eight different vegetables chopped up. And then my salad dressing itself also has herbs and vegetables and citrus juice. So I feel like it's very nutrient dense and sprouts. Um, and I know that those come, um, you know, with uh, a ton of uh, antioxidants and polyphenols and phytonutrients and minerals. Um, so I know I'm getting tons of vitamins, minerals, and a variety of antioxidants throughout um, the day. And I honestly don't feel like I have any deficiencies. Um I don't count calories and I don't do like chronometer. Uh, so I don't have any fears or worries about any deficiencies. Yeah, fantastic. And speaking of sprouts, they, I mean, they're praised for their nutritional benefits. Can you just highlight some of their other benefits? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So sprouts have life force energy. So I, I like to think of them as like magic foods, right? So they, they are actually living foods. So there's a difference between a raw food and a living food. A living food is still alive. It's still considered to be growing or thriving. Um, it still has more light frequencies within it. Raw food still has a lot of light frequencies in it, much more than cooked foods mm -hmm. and much more than animal foods. Um, animal foods, I don't think have any in it. Um, so, uh, but but microgreens and sprouts have the most life force energy, the most light frequency because they're still alive. Um, but uh, they they also have a ton more antioxidants. And in the medical medium books, he talks about um, like supernatural power. So there is a little bit of magic in, in the books um, as well. And I do believe in that. Um, and then uh, if you don't believe in that, you can look at the Hippocrates Health Institute. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Clement, he's the director there. Um, he talks openly and has studies um, referencing, um, for instance, that broccoli microgreens have 50 times the amount of antioxidants as fully developed broccoli. Um, so, so yeah, I definitely think that they are superior um, in terms of their nutrition content however you don't want to just eat those um and you know it would be very difficult to feel fully sustained if you just ate those but I really love to sprinkle them on my salads sometimes in my smoothies and sometimes even in juice fantastic I love that in terms of superfoods you mentioned a couple there camu camu and uh, wild aloe vera are there any other lesser known superfoods that perhaps are something that you recommend people add into their diet, particularly if they're having a high content of raw food, just to sort of balance everything out? Yeah, I think uh, sea vegetables, I would classify those as superfoods because they can help to remove radiation from the body and EMFs, which, um, you know, I think it's a huge problem nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, thyme, um, rosemary, um, and you can get these in tinctures too, if you can't find them fresh. Mm -hmm. um, but I think those are, are very good to incorporate. Um, I mentioned the spirulina, the barley grass juice powder. Oh, I also medicinal mushrooms. I like lion's mane and reishi and um, shiitake, um, you know, all, all of those um, cordyceps, um, all of those different medicinal mushrooms, I think have a lot of uh, healing properties and cognitive improvement abilities and, uh, you know, stress relieving properties. Um, ashwagandha, which is um, a root or an herb. Um, uh, so yeah, I think a lot of those are beneficial to incorporate. And those are really easy to add into smoothies. So mm -hmm. if anyone's wondering, how do you how do you get those in? Just get yes, them definitely. in powder form okay. and just add them to your smoothies and you won't even really taste them. 
Okay. How accessible are they in terms of the mushrooms to buy as the whole food as opposed to having them as a powder or a tablet? And the whole food? Um, I see them selling lion's mane at the farmer's market. Oh, okay. um, they actually, yeah, in Seattle, we have them at the farmer's market. And then here I've seen it as well in Florida. Okay. I haven't seen all of the varieties, but I've seen lion's mane for sure. Obviously shiitake. Mm. Um, I don't know if I've seen the others in their whole food form. So I get those generally in powders. Yeah. Um, we don't but, have them uh, here in the whole food form. So I would love to experiment oh, okay. with them and try cooking. And yeah, I think that would be yeah. Yeah, interesting. Some, of them, some them. of them look a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've seen some videos on those. Yeah. That's interesting. And also when uh, we talk about collagen and, and protein, um, how do most people, I mean, collagen is typically derived from animal uh, products. How do we get collagen in the best form or what's the most convenient way to get that in terms of a vegan supplement? Well, I believe the body produces its own collagen. Um, and so if you're consuming a lot of these plant foods that we've talked about, um, including the aloe vera, the sea vegetables, these um, very antioxidant rich plant foods like the wild blueberries, um, then you're providing your body with <clears throat> the nutrients that it needs to be able to create and make its own collagen. So I don't believe that if you consume animal collagen, it's actually going to do any good for you mm -hmm. because that's another source of just dead energy. You're taking a certain aspect of an animal just because you eat it doesn't mean it's going to produce that same thing for you. So for example, if you lost an eye, if you go and eat a pig's eye, doesn't mean your eye is going to grow back. So I think there's so much misinformation out there mm. and it's not even logical. Mm. So I, it's just marketing. Anybody does see any improvement, it's either a placebo effect or they're they're doing some other aspects um, in their routine. That's actually what's creating the improvement, not the powder itself. Mm. As a health coach, uh, what are some of the common misconceptions or challenges that you sort of hear from your clients when they first come to you? Uh, you know, the challenges about, about being vegan or having, you know, a high raw food diet and how do you help them overcome those challenges? That's a really good question. I think the biggest issue these days is the protein. There's so much propaganda and misinformation about the protein. I think even in the vegan community, I I find it to be very annoying at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people are telling people to eat like one gram per body weight or per pound of body weight or something crazy like that, or even more. And uh, it's actually very hard on the liver and the kidneys. And these people who are following that advice, they're gonna have health issues later on. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the biggest issue I have is when people come to me and they ask me, well, what about the protein? I'm not getting mm -hmm. enough based on the recommendation. And I have to, I have to try to, you know, work against all of the propaganda and try to get them to, you know, see the logic. And uh, that's really challenging because we don't need hardly any protein. I mean, uh, we like we only need 10 to 15 percent of our calories from protein and you can get it all from leafy greens. It's basically just amino acids. I don't I mean, I do use um, a protein powder, but only because I enjoy the taste only because I partner with this company that I love and I have been working with them for um, like six years now and there's other superfoods within the powder. Um, I never take it because I feel like I need the protein. Mm -hmm. um, and I, in fact, I, when I cleanse, I don't use the powders mm -hmm. and I actually feel better. So I'm actually, you know, working on perhaps, you know, taking that out of my routine because I feel better digestion and more energy when I don't use the protein. That's mm -hmm. another like another thing I'm working on in terms of I enjoy the taste. Yeah, that, I find that fascinating because um, you're right. There is so much hype about protein and yeah, getting the, yeah. the daily nutrients and and getting that in. Um, so also in your coaching practice, what strategies do you find most effective for helping your clients overcome food cravings? Um, well, I feel like if people are eating enough, um, they shouldn't necessarily be craving unless it's an emotional craving mm. um, or perhaps like a texture craving. Like sometimes I crave like a different texture um, in my meals and 
that's why I love the dehydrator because you can create like a crunch mm-hmm. factor using that. Um, but I feel like if you're eating enough calories and you're getting um, all of your nutrient needs met, then you shouldn't have these cravings. And if you're eating enough fruit, then you shouldn't have these sugar cravings. So if I front load my day with an abundance of fruits, mm-hmm. then I don't crave like chocolate or cake or cookies or something like that for dinner uh, or after dinner, I should say. Um, however, if I don't get enough fruits, I do notice, you know, oh, maybe I would like some sort of a sweet treat after my salad. Um, and so I think it's important to get enough fruits and vegetables in a wide variety and to get enough calories. And also it might take time um, because you only crave the foods that you're eating, I think, unless mm. maybe you're scrolling on social right. media and right. you see something that looks appealing. Um, but uh, you generally tend to crave what you're eating. Mm. Um, And so I think it just takes a little bit of time to transition um, into this way of eating. And before you know it, that's what you crave. Like I crave my salad every night. I don't crave, you know, a cheeseburger or a pizza or something like that. I crave the salad because I know it's going to satisfy me. It's a time game, I think. And and it's, um, you know, getting, getting each person to understand that uh, it's about their health and it's about um, longevity. And uh, once they understand that, once they can see that, um, and, and once they've eaten this way for long enough, then I don't think it's an issue. That's great. On your Instagram page, your photos and the food and just the recipes that you create are so diverse and they look delicious. How do you, and a lot of the misconceptions about being a vegan or, you know, going into raw food is that you don't get enough variety or it's boring and dull, but you certainly prove have proven the opposite of that. So how do you go about crafting your meals? Do you just have, um, do you keep it very simple? What's your personal approach well, thank you. Um, I I feel like it's simple, um, but maybe maybe it's not for everyone. But I generally um, stick to like my three main dishes, and then I have a variety of recipes for each three, mm-hmm. and that's the juices, the smoothies, and the salads. Um, however, for my last ebook that I wrote, I really wanted to dive into gourmet raw. And so I got a dehydrator just for fun. Like, I don't think I need it. I don't think anyone needs it, but it's fun. What yeah. dehydrator did you get? Was it the Excalibur? Because I'm also looking into getting a, a, another one as well. I hear that's the best. That's mm-hmm. not what I got. Um, I do like the one I have. However, um, I think it's called the Magic Mike. I want to say I'll okay. I'll tell you after yeah please um, do. I've got one of the yeah. round ones and for anyone looking at getting a dehydrator don't get the round ones because you can't do wraps you can't do you're so limited um but it was yeah. all that was available when I purchased mine uh, I think 10 years ago so yeah oh, wow. I'm sure they've come a long way now so wow that's so cool you got one so long yeah. ago yeah yeah um anyway yeah no this one's a square and it works really well okay the only thing that I don't love about it is so you can set it to a raw setting but okay. you can't um you can't go, I think it's just set at 113. So you can't mm-hmm. do like 114 or 115. Okay. Um, and I think you can go all the way up to 117 to be raw. Other than that, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. What's been so, some of your greatest sort of inventions in there? What have you come up with so far? Oh my gosh. So in the last book, I made this raw vegan pizza. It was right. insanely delicious. Oh my gosh so good so what was I got the crust made of I'm curious um raw buckwheat oh that's interesting because yeah. every time I try to do raw crackers and I've done some with flaxseed and chia and everything but raw pizzas or any kind of well any kind of flatbread I've just never I've never nailed it it's it's a tricky thing I think getting the exact percentages right of each ingredient yeah yeah I uh I got some inspiration out of a physical raw book but I changed the recipe quite a bit just based on what I had at my disposal but it really Mm -hmm. turned out well 
Um, it was, it might've actually been the most delicious pizza I ever had, even wow. versus cooked. Right. Um, so this is the only thing with the gourmet foods. It's like, it, it'll take like two days to make a recipe. Right. Um, because, you know, like in the buckwheat, for example, you have to soak it for like three hours. Um, and then you process it with the other ingredients and then you typically have to dehydrate it overnight mm -hmm. and then you create the toppings and then you stick it back in the dehydrator. And so it's quite a process, but it's really fun and it really helps you to connect with your food. Which oh, I is can really imagine. Cool. And what about doing yeah. vegetables in the dehydrator? Do you do that just to warm anything up a little bit, like just to make it a slightly warmer than, you know, the average room temperature? I haven't done that. I, I've, I've used it to warm up other um, dehydrated meals that I've already prepped, like the raw vegan burgers that I make. So I'll stick those back in to warm them up. Okay. But that's a good idea to stick some vegetables in there. I'm just, I've never done um, it. So I'm just wondering what it's like. Yeah. Um, I've no, done mushrooms really in idea. there, but I've let them go to the point where they're they're really dehydrated and they end up sort of, you know, going very small, shrinking up quite small. And yeah, yeah, but, but they're, they're good though, right? They're so good. And then I usually just um, grind them right down into a powder and then you can use that as seasoning, you know, in other foods. That's what yeah. I've, I've oh, done. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah just, I'll have to try that. I normally, what's the spice I use? Smoked paprika to make them a little bit sort of smoky. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a lot of paprika. Yeah. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I think um, paprika comes from Hungary. I know. I was like, just thinking that. Yeah, it does uh, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so in terms of juicing, just talk me through um, the advantages of juicing. I know I love it. I love juicing. I couldn't live without it. I've done it for many, many years and I, I've got a cold press juicer, so I do it regularly. But for people that don't know what, and, and you probably got a lot more knowledge behind this being a health coach, um, what are some of the advantages of adding juices to you? Not necessarily doing a full blown juice cleanse and only consuming juice for 10 days, but adding them on a daily basis to your diet or a weekly basis, just every other day. What are the advantages from a nutritional point of view? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I feel like there's all this controversy and like juicing versus smoothies. And I think mm -hmm. they are both very important. Um, so it's just important to understand that they're very different. So juices are not going to have the fiber. And that's a good thing. Everyone's like, oh, you're missing the fiber. But mm -hmm. oh my goodness, fiber is not going to cure you of any kind of illness. Fiber is not the like, you know, the magic that we're looking for to make sure everybody's healthy. Mm. Okay. So fiber is actually something that you don't even digest. There aren't even any nutrients in there. And if you are eating a plant-based diet, you're going to get a ton of fiber with your other meals. So stop worrying about the fiber people. Oh my gosh. That's like, that one of my biggest pet peeves, people asking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so the benefit of taking the fiber out is it's so much easier for us to absorb all of those micronutrients, those antioxidants, those vitamins that are in the juice because the fiber gets in the way. So without the fiber there, um, our intestinal tract can just absorb that. It's almost like a vitamin transfusion. So there's nothing in the way and it's easy it's easy on the system so it doesn't take energy for the body to digest juice it's very very easy you can absorb a lot more antioxidants a lot more nutrients from that juice than if you were to have it in the smoothie smoothies are amazing as well however you're not going to absorb everything and it will take a lot more time so I think I look at juicing as medicine and we are living in a day and age where we need medicine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to be honest, I think the writing is on the wall. People's health is only going to get worse. So, um, you know, we've got to all incorporate juicing and we've got to look at it as medicine if we want to stay well, because I mean, we're up against a lot. We're up against a lot right now, um, you know, with the state of the world. And so um, I think the more medicine that we take in, the easier our lives are going to be. So I definitely recommend juicing, but you want to drink juice on an empty stomach. So I think that's very important to understand as well. So because there is no fiber, you're going to absorb the juice much faster and that's going to be digested faster. So if there's already a meal in the stomach, 
then you're going to experience gas and bloating because the juice is going to try to seep its way through that other meal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to create issues. So you want to drink the juice on an empty stomach, wait about 15 to 30 minutes before you consume anything else. Um, but yeah, I, I, I cannot say enough about juicing. I think if you want to stay healthy and avoid disease, you're going to have to juice. I love that. That's fantastic. And I think it's a really, really good point that you mentioned, you know, about having it on an empty stomach, because if you add something like kale, that's quite fibrous in there, that's quite rich, you know, um, a lot of people say, oh, kale makes me bloat, but that's, you know, one of the most important points, having it on the empty stomach, so it doesn't do that. So I think that's a good way to get yeah. some of those greens in there that you don't like, or you can't sort of tolerate the taste for on their own, you know, in a traditional salad or in a meal. So I yeah. think that's great. Yeah, because it's so easy to drink the juice. Like right. I make a lot of juices that don't taste good, yeah. but I look at it as medicine and it's so easy to just drink it. It's not mm. like a meal that you have to sit down and chew for 45 minutes, you That's know? Right. So um, people just need to get over the fact that it might not taste that good. I mean, people drink alcohol and I think alcohol tastes terrible. So I'm, I'm with you, you on know, that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, what would be your favorite juice? like to boost your energy in the afternoon, if you were feeling a little bit low, a little bit tired, or if you'd had a busy week and you're feeling a little bit run down, what would be your go-to juice recipe? Oh my gosh. Well, right now I'm addicted to watermelon juice. Oh, it's like, I know. I'm the so, same. I love it. So good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but I guess that's just one ingredient. So maybe I can be a little more creative than that. Um, <laughs> A really delicious one, um, if you've never tried, is pineapple and raspberry. Oh, I've um, definitely so never had a, that. Yeah, so this is a fruit juice. So uh, typically wow. the, uh, the vegetable juices don't taste amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can combine fruits and vegetables and get it to be decent. Um, but if you really want a delicious one, mm -hmm. pineapple and raspberry. That's great. Um, my, friend, uh, my friend Juice Feaster came up with that recipe, I think. Nice. Um, it's so good oh my goodness but I drink um cucumber juice pretty much every day oh, in the afternoon it. and then watermelon juice um and then the other ones I I make are a lot more medicinal um so I juice a lot of herbs those definitely do not taste good <laughs> but uh yeah I can imagine yeah but I feel I feel invigorated after and right now I'm doing um a wheatgrass challenge so oh, right okay. now I'm drinking wheatgrass shots every day which, which I need a separate juicer for um but that's been fun I'm sure so I'm curious about the wheatgrass because I went to yeah. a health retreat and we had shots every morning and by the fifth or sixth day I could not do another wheatgrass shot do you have a chaser, like a little shot of orange juice or something afterwards, or do you mix it with anything else? Or do you just have it purely by itself? Are you really tough in that way? And you can just take it? I can, I can. You do. Wow, yeah, that's impressive. I, I mean, I have mixed it before. Um, right. In fact, yesterday I mixed it with um, celery and cucumber, and that was actually very delightful. I was surprised okay. because wheatgrass is pretty sweet, so it right. brought this sweetness to the juice and I actually enjoyed it which I was surprised by but I generally just have it on its own so I grew up taking wheatgrass shots in Seattle we had them in all the juice cafes um one thing I want to say about Seattle is it's a very health conscious city there's juice bars mm -hmm. everywhere oh wow um, we even had wheatgrass shots at the gym um there's vegan restaurants everywhere I mean I haven't oh, been welcome. back in a couple of years um so I don't know if they all made it through the pandemic, but um, the, I, I feel like I was able to take wheatgrass shots pretty regularly in my 20s and 30s. And so Amazing. it's pretty easy now. Um, but yeah, I would say it doesn't, it doesn't taste and feel amazing like sometimes it creates a little bit of nausea mm -hmm. um but i think that could just be a detox symptom um and it dissipates re relatively quickly like 10 15 minutes um and you don't feel it anymore mm -hmm. that's interesting um so in terms of other raw vegan recipes um how often do you make sort of the sweet treats and do you have a favorite recipe that you could share with us for that like i know that there's little bliss or energy balls or brownies yeah. are the most common ones is there something else that you've come up you've you know uh created well, that's just really been a winner to be honest I don't make them often because I live alone 
And with my body constitution, I do gain weight a lot easier than other people. Um, and so as I was sharing earlier, when I front load with fruit, I don't really crave any, good. um, any sweet treat after dinner. And if I do have a sweet treat after dinner, I do, I'll gain weight, even if it's raw vegan. And sometimes it'll mess with my digestion because I really need to keep my fats relatively low. So I typically am fat free until dinner. And my, my salad dressing is what contains some nuts and seeds. So uh, like on a regular routine, I won't have any uh, desserts like that. And I live alone. So if I could share it with someone, it'd yeah. be a different story. But for um, for my last ebook, I made a tart that was really good. And mm -hmm. before that, I've made raw vegan cheesecakes that are insanely delicious. Oh my gosh. But um, it's a lot of cashews, so it's very rich and very dense. So I just want people to know that those things are really a treat. They shouldn't be like consumed on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but you can essentially soak cashews and blend them with a variety of different fruits and maybe like some lemon juice and lemon zest and then freeze that, you know, once you've created your tart Um your base and uh and the base is typically yeah yeah the base is typically like nuts uh maybe flax seeds and cinnamon and maple syrup um and so it can be very very rich it's just like a cheesecake i would think um mm -hmm. it's been a really long time since i've had a cheesecake so um Same. but i think <laughs> it tastes just good just, just satisfying yeah, definitely. And how do you, when your clients come to you, how do you, and they're concerned about eating, adopting this way of eating and eating a higher raw diet or plant-based, um, and they're concerned about holidays and going out and socializing, how do you tell them what's the best way? What are your tips to, you know, um, help them when they're going out in social situations? Well, it is sometimes challenging if you're going to a place that um, doesn't have options. So I think if, if you are going to a restaurant, it's really great to look at the menu in advance. I feel like most places you can get a salad nowadays. Um, so I would recommend bringing uh, maybe like if they don't have avocado, bring like avocado um, or I'm sure they have avocado. So ask for avocado and like lemon juice because I wouldn't trust the dressings at any, yeah. any of the um, locations. They probably use seed oils and canola oil, which are super inflammatory, horrible for digestion. Um, you know, if, if it is a vegan restaurant, you can probably ask what they're using. If it's not, I would bring my own dressing or just ask for avocado and lemon um, if it's like a gathering where you're going to, where somebody else is cooking, like a family, I would maybe just let them know, Hey, this is my, my, my diet, my lifestyle. Are you going to have anything, um, that I'll be able to eat? And if not, maybe bring your own dish. And then, you know, if you bring your own dish, you can share it with people and it'll start a conversation and you can maybe even plant some seeds, um, and maybe somebody is going to have an aha moment and, you know, maybe they're going to be curious and maybe they're going to go home and start mm -hmm. researching and then they're going to share it with somebody. So you that. can have a ripple effect. So I think it's actually doing a disservice to always stay at home. Um, we've got to mm -hmm. get out there and share this beautiful, abundant health promoting food with people because people need to know. You know, I walk outside and I see a lot of people look sick to me. A lot of people are struggling with their health. And a lot of people are standing in line at the Chick-fil-A, at the McDonald's, at the Burger King or whatever it is. And I feel like even though it's 2023, they're still not making the connection that that food is poison, that they're going to get sick and, you know, they're going to have health issues. And so we've got to... We've got to have the courage to share this information. So I just want to commend you for doing this because you're helping to raise awareness by you. You know, doing this podcast. So you're, you're definitely doing your part. So I just want to thank you for that. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's my greatest yeah. passion, honestly. I've been to a number of health retreats now around the world and done stories on them. And 
I'm very curious. So I love asking questions and, and just learning from different people. And there's just so much to learn. You're, you're learning something new every day and everybody has their own unique spin and um, on how they're approaching health and wellness and um, maintaining or living a vegan and plant-based lifestyle. And I think we can all learn from each other and support each other and inspire each other. So I think it's, I think it's yeah. outstanding. So good. Yeah. Um, so you talked a little bit about your spiritual awakening or you had a point, did that have anything at all? Is it related to the diet? Is it when you found that you sort of were adding more raw foods into the diet, did you find there was any kind of shift in your mental clarity, your focus, and certainly your um, spiritual connection and awareness? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So I went vegan before I had my spiritual awakening, but very soon after that, I started receiving the message that I needed to adopt this lifestyle. And the messages, everybody gets messages in different ways. Mm. Um, they can be, you know, synchronicities. So mm. um, like that documentary that I mentioned that I saw, um, I was uh, on my couch in Seattle and I, I had fallen asleep. I had this amazing couch. Oh my God, I missed that couch. Um, <laughs> I had fallen asleep. I had fallen asleep and my phone flashed and it was 11, 11. <gasps> and all of a sudden the documentary came on and that's how I first found the raw vegan that's documentary. Amazing. That's a and very then, spiritual number, isn't it? The form, it's, the yeah. gate, it's a spiritual gateway or portal, isn't it? From my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it depends on what you believe. And I feel like when you do believe your guidance system is going to communicate to you in whichever way you're going to believe and that you're going to see that it's going to catch your eye. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people might see, um, you know, birds appear at certain times or, um, you know, certain books will just fall off the shelf when you're walking in the bookstore, like things mm. like that will happen. Um, and then all of a sudden, so at this stage, um, when I first had the spiritual awakening, all of a sudden I was meeting one vegan person after the other before wow. that. Okay. I never met a, a vegan person before, like at least they didn't introduce themselves to me. That's and then all so of a sudden, all of a sudden I was meeting vegan people left and right. And I, I had started working with a medium um, at this time in my life, and she was helping me get clear on some trauma that I had experienced. And she communicated to me um, that, uh, you know, in terms of like spiritual law, it is best to not consume other animals because we're only contributing to more suffering on the planet. I agree. Um, and so while, you know, everything is connected, right? And everything is energy. And so as long as we humans are creating suffering on the planet, there will be suffering on the planet because you can't, that's what you're creating. We create our own reality. So if we're killing animals, there's going to be death and destruction on the planet. And so every time you vote to go cruelty-free, you are helping to create a more peaceful planet, a better planet for all of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was able to communicate that to me. And some people, and this was her, um, you know, some people have this gift, if you want to call it a gift, but um, once they consume an animal, she was able to see um, the animal being slaughtered and she, mm. she was able to get that visual and that sense of that feeling, um, you know, that suffering taking place in that animal at the time that it was slaughtered. So some people mm. have that ability. Everybody has different gifts. Absolutely. Um, and so she can't eat animals because of that. And right. so she's been vegan ever since like her gifts started coming in. Um, and so I think it's important to, to understand that even if you don't have that gift um, doesn't mean you're not taking in that suffering energy. You're just not aware of it. So it mm -hmm. might show up in a different way, you know, but you are taking it in and it can show up as anger, as mm -hmm. sadness, as depression, as frustration. And you won't connect the dots because that's, that's where we are in, in this current reality is people aren't able to connect the dots yet. But, uh, you know, there are others on the planet who are able to connect the dots and there are people 
um, who do sense that, um, you know, us empaths, we can sense these things. And uh, I think it's just really important um, to have that awareness that there is suffering and pain involved when people consume meat and dairy products. Mm -hmm. And why, why would you vote for that when, when there's so many alternatives, you know, why would you condone that? And how disgusting is that? Like, I find it to be disgusting. I mean, I'm not here to judge, you know, we can't judge people because everybody's on their own journey, but Mm -hmm. I myself personally, you know, find it to be disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be, true at the age of 11 when I saw the animals being slaughtered and so um you know I I do think that there is a deep connection between veganism and you know cultivating your spiritual practice I'm not saying you can't have a spiritual practice and not be vegan however you know in my personal opinion I don't think you can reach your highest level of enlightenment on this earth if you are, you know, partaking in contributing to the suffering of animals. Right. Yes, I 100% agree. And for what is it, five minutes of pleasure while you're eating the food, yeah. um, you know, you're destroying an entire life. So it yeah. d- doesn't doesn't balance out, doesn't weigh up for me, doesn't make any no. sense to me. And I agree with you. Um, and so interestingly enough, you spoke about synchronicities and I'm a big believer in those. And, uh, I've had a lot of different experiences in my own personal journey. Um, uh, I find it fascinating to hear other people's stories of synchronicity and how that's played out. Have you got any of those amazing stories that just bring, you know, such a big smile to your face that you remember that have been really, um, you know, tipping points or really important in your journey that propelled you onto the next stage? Um, does it have to be with food related? No, not at all. No. no, just synchronicity. And since you've sort of been on this path. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I honestly, I live my life, um, in accordance with my spiritual practice. So mm-hmm. I've essentially surrendered to, to my, my soul path and my calling. That's, uh, that's the main reason I'm moving now is I've, got the message that it's time to go and I I got the message back in 2020 that it was time to leave Seattle and everything so the universe when it's time for you to change and if you don't make the change the universe will make the change for you Mm. and uh you know sometimes it'll happen um alongside of the changes you're making so when I first got the download that it was time to leave Seattle I had lost my job. Mm -hmm. I had lost most of my friends. I had lost the relationship that I was in. My parents had moved back to Hungary. So I literally had nothing there. Nothing was all of these signs were the universe was really speaking loudly. Right. Yes, very, very clearly. And I uh, I wanted so I wanted to chase the sun and it's in my astrology chart that I'm mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be gravitating towards the sun mm-hmm. um, and so immediately I had this download come about Arizona mm-hmm. and you can tell if it's in alignment well I, I'm able to also um, ask my higher self and get questions answered immediately but if you don't have that ability quite yet you all do um it just takes practice but um you, the one way you can tell if it's the right decision is things will happen easy in a flow state so i was able to sell all of my belongings very quickly like within 3 weeks i sold all of my belongings including my car wow that's fast. I got yeah, <laughs> and I and I was able to get approved for an apartment down there, um, very easily. And I thought it would be challenging because I just lost my job. Mm. I just lost my job, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to earn enough income to qualify. You know, with my online presence at the time. So I used to have a different Instagram account last year. It was hacked. Um, and oh, I, God, I had it all over. So I, I used to have a bigger following. Right. Um, so I was able to earn more income um, at the time, but it was still questionable. And somehow, magically, I got approved. Um, and uh, 
and I did run into a little bit of trouble down there, but I think that was planned um, because one of my previous clients um, from Seattle had relocated down there. And so he was able to help me immediately. He was available for help when I made the call. Um, and uh, I was able to get to where I needed to go with ease. I was supported on my path. Um, and so one way you can tell, you know, if you're making the right decision is you're going to see support along the way. Whereas if you force a decision and it's not the right one or might not be the best one, um, you're going to experience more resistance, more pushback. Mm. Um, and so I would say, you know, I don't know if that's synchronistic, but it's, it feels magical. It feels like Definitely it's in the it flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you get these, these downloads, I like to call them, sometimes it'll come as a thought and then it'll come as a knowing. Um, like I deep down know I have to leave here um, relatively soon. And, um, and it's just become clear, you know, it'll just be clear. And then all of a sudden you'll get the thought of, you know, what to look up next for, for the next place that you're going to go. And then one thing will lead to the next and you'll meet the right person when you need to meet the right person. Mm -hmm. And it can be a little scary because sometimes you don't have what you need until you really need it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you have to cultivate that trust. Um, And that's been something I've been working on, on this path is, you know, I'm here alone on, on this entire continent because my family had moved back. And so it's been scary for me to not have any support Mm -hmm. as a single person. Mm -hmm. And so I've really had to really, really rely on my spiritual practice and cultivate this trust that the universe does have my back, you know, and that I can ask for help and I will get the help that I need, but it might not show up until the moment I actually need it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it takes practice and you've got to be working on healing your trauma, your inner wounding, which we all have here on planet Earth. You know, this is a dualistic planet. So we've all had some sort of wounding. Um, and so, you know, as, as long as you're working on healing that and loving yourself, you're going to be able to see these these synchronicities or these downloads or these knowings of what you need to do um, on your path going forward. I love that. That's beautifully, beautifully said. And yeah, it's, it's sort of exciting. I think it's exciting because I mean, it is really, it does come down to divine timing and it does come down to trust and faith and, um, and sort of surrendering your control, you know, because we want to have everything mapped out and planned out, but we've got to leave a little bit of room for the universe to surprise us, you know, with something magical, as you say, I think that's, that's great. A lot of people say when going onto a vegan or raw vegan diet, you're consuming a lot of fruits and vegetables. And sometimes the cost of that or the budgeting can be um, a concern for people. How do you suggest or recommend people to, um, you know, move forward with this approach to eating and, but, and where can they save? What are some good tips of how people can save money, but still maintain a degree of nutritional excellence and, you know, staying on track? Yeah, I think this is a really good question too, because food prices have really gone up. Um, I would say my food bill is my second highest bill after Mm. my rent, um, which never used to be the case, I think. Mm. Um, And I'm exactly the same here in Australia. The cost of living has gone up exponentially in the last two years, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, I think it's very important to prioritize your health. That has to be the number one. Um, and again, we're living in a time where we can't afford to play around. Like there really can't be a lot of wiggle room, um, you know, in terms of our diet. The chronic illness epidemic is on the rise, and I think it's only going to get worse um, until it gets better. And uh, so you just have to you have to cultivate that self love. You have to. You have to realize that you are worthy of health and that you have to prioritize purchasing these these foods that are going to give you health. You're not going to get any health from anything that comes out of a box, a can, or a bag. Um, everything that is health promoting is only a fruit, a vegetable, or an herb. Mm-hmm. Um you know, nuts and seeds have some healing, well, some nutrition properties, but even those won't heal you. Mm. So you've got to get, you've got to pay for these foods. They have to be a priority. So I would say it's really important to cut out whatever you don't need. 
So I guarantee everybody has something that they're paying for that they don't need in the Western world, you know, in modern society. Everybody's got some sort of subscription. They're not, not even using, you know, I used to work as a personal trainer in a gym. You'd be, not that I want people to cancel gym memberships. I think mm -hmm. it's really important, but this is a funny example. I would say only about 10% of the people who had memberships actually came to the gym. You'd wow, be amazed. 90% of the people who have memberships and are that's enrolled do not even go. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah. And so I think, I think, you know, that's probably the case in a number of different things that they're paying for. So different apps or whatever it is that they're doing, they should cut out things like um, going to the coffee shop or purchasing alcohol um, or, you know, whatever whatever activities they're doing that are not health promoting mm. to make room for these foods or to be able to purchase these foods. And then what I do is I, I shop the sales. So I look every week, you know, what's on sale and then that's what I buy. Those are the produce items that I buy. I mean, I have my non-negotiables like my celery, my bananas, my lemons, cannot live without those and my onions. Um, but the other things, the, um, you know, the um, add-ons, you know, like one week I'll buy cauliflower if that's on sale. Next week I'll get broccoli if that's on sale, for example. Um, and then I, um, the frozen fruit is really expensive here. That's been terrible. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll buy, like if berries are on sale, instead of buying them in the freezer section, I'll buy them fresh and freeze them for my smoothies. Great. I shop at the farmer's market. Um, and, uh, the farmer's market, believe it or not, is cheaper now than the grocery store, which it never used to be. Mm, so, yeah. So I, I get as much as I can at the farmer's market. Um, and typically this is a little pro tip. If you mm -hmm. go the last hour, um, when they're getting ready to close up, they're going to want to sell everything because the farmers don't want to take that food back. So oftentimes they'll mark things down the very last hour. So if anybody right. um, wants to use that, I mean, you're going to have good. less to choose from. Mm -hmm. However, it's more than likely that you're going to get, um, you know, a better deal um, great that tip. last hour. Great yeah. Um, and then another thing would be to just stay on top of the food from spoiling. So the last thing you want to do is spend all this money on this produce and then have it spoil. Mm. So every single day I check to see how everything is doing and I eat whatever is going to spoil first. So, mm. um, you know, I'll, I'll use the greens that are spoiling first in my salad or in my smoothie. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another thing is you can freeze things for the smoothies or for... Idea. Yeah. Yeah. So like if, if I don't think I can eat something before it's going to spoil, I peel it and chop it up and freeze it. And then that's going to go into a smoothie. Mm -hmm. um, you can also juice some things that are getting ready to spoil, um, but they're still good. Um, so it's really important to stay on top of the produce. So just make sure that's great. that you have it organized in the fridge mm -hmm. um, or you know, and wherever you're storing it. So you can see it on a daily basis and look at it and touch it every day. Like, how is this looking? You know, does it need to be used now or can it stay another day? And uh, that's how I make my decisions. That's brilliant. Um, no, that's yeah, great advice. Not, really yeah. great advice. Yeah, I yeah, think that's I think fantastic. That's good, yeah. That's great. Like, what are your hopes and visions for the future of food and um, the plant-based diet or movement? And where do you see everything sort of moving in what direction? Well, this is another good question. I love that there's more vegan options out there, but I would love for us to move away from these processed, I agree. These processed vegan foods, like mm. these fake vegan meats. I think they're going to cause digestive issues. Mm. Um, you know, they're, they're not, a lot of times they have GMO ingredients and the seed oils and, you know, all these inflammatory ingredients and um, who knows what else, you know, I, I honestly, I don't trust a lot of the manufacturers. I think they're hiding, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of additives in there that are not health promoting. Mm. So I myself would love to see everyone move towards eating whole foods. I would love to see more and more people growing their food. And I, I do see more and more people growing their food. So I think that's amazing. Mm. Um, now I see 
Um, there's even, um, what are they called? Those tower gardens where you can grow even in yes. an apartment building. The sprouts yeah. and the macro greens, I've seen them, they're brilliant. Yeah, so whatever you can do to grow something, uh, depending on you know your living situation and focusing on just consuming whole plant foods, uh, and I, I don't want to, you know, get into conspiracy theory, but I do believe that uh, there's going to be issues in terms of more and more things being hidden um, in other types of foods. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's going to be safe. So I, I think we've got to, we've got to um, do our best to know the source of the food and uh, do our due diligence to avoid, you know, having to purchase from manufacturers where mm. you know and chemicals um being added on purpose so um yeah yeah interesting oh that's great what would be your best advice if somebody comes to you and is considering you know they're on a normal diet they're feeling fatigued or sluggish they've got no energy they're lethargic and and they wanted to feel better and improve their health what would you suggest I think uh, I think it depends on the level of illness. If somebody's um, severely ill, I I would recommend they go all in. Um, and it might be uncomfortable, but they're going to heal much faster than if they go slowly. If they are healthy um, or relatively healthy, and they just have some mild symptoms, then they can take their time. Um, and I would say, you know, start the morning win the morning is how I like to say so mm -hmm. win the morning with your hydration um with your juices mm -hmm. with you know a fruit meal or a smoothie and try to keep uh, anything you know processed or any kind of a fat um source out of that morning and maybe go from there and then I think it also depends on your personality so some people are those people who can go all in and then there are other people who that wouldn't work for them. So I think it's really important to know yourself and know, you know, what's worked for you in the past when making different um, choices in life, um, because that's going to probably hold true in this example as well. Um, and so if you are someone who can go all in, I would say go all in. Um, if you are someone who would benefit, um, you know, taking a slower approach, I would say win the morning and then start adding in more whole foods um you know maybe maybe working your way up to like a fully plant-based day a week and then maybe two and then maybe three and then you know so on and so forth and I think it's most important to get um, a lot of these processed foods out um get the alcohol out to get the caffeine out to get the you know candy bars out I think it's most important to get the poisons out okay so there's a lot of foods that are not foods, they're actually poisonous to the body. So it's really important to understand that, um, you know, every species has a preferred food and there is no species on planet earth that prefers Snicker bars and Starbucks lattes and Budweiser beers and Domino's pizzas, you know, like that nobody, no, no species is gonna thrive on any of that. So Absolutely. we've got to get all of that out um and just incorporate these healing foods that's brilliant i think that's fantastic advice but tell us about your ebooks that you've got i know you've got a seven day raw food guide and you yeah. said that you're working on or you've completed the the gourmet food guide yeah yeah that was in the last um plant-based bundle right so okay. if anyone if anyone got the plant-based bundle they should have all three of my ebooks so i have fantastic. one that um I have two that are fully raw and then one that's like half cooked and half raw that I wrote with um, my mom's help in Hungary. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. 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 We, uh, on one of my trips there, we made a bunch of traditional Hungarian foods, but we made them vegan and gluten-free and, uh, okay. it was a really fun process. Um, and I, I was excited because I got my mom to go plant-based. Oh, pretty oh much. wow. So, yeah. How's she doing now? Is she feeling good? Yeah, yeah, she's doing good. And she has a garden. Um, she has a ton of fruit trees. 
Um, I'm really, I'm really sad. I'm not there right now for the summertime because she has all of the fruit trees, you know, peaches and nectarines oh, and cherries and grapes. So <laughs> big too. So oh, I'm going to okay. go in October and she's freezing a bunch for me. So I'm oh, excited. That's beautiful. Very nice. Well, this yeah. has been brilliant. Thank you so much, Edith, for being here. Can you let us know where can everybody find you? Yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram. I'm trying to rebuild my account. Mm -hmm. um, so if people can support me there, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll I would put say everything below as well. Yeah, I would say I share um, a lot of information in my stories. Mm -hmm. I would say I, I I shine in the stories. The posts are good, um, but I, I share even more in my stories. So if anyone wants to check those out, um, I do need to be more consistent on YouTube. It's just been, to be quite honest, it's been quite challenging to manage everything on my own, um, but I'm definitely planning on being more active there. Fantastic. That's great. You're such a beautiful soul and you've got so much knowledge to share and wisdom to share. And yeah, we, I truly appreciate you being here today. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you. To all of my viewers, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it brings you value in some capacity. And if so, please make sure you share it with your friends and family. We've got more fantastic episodes coming up and interviews with incredible people I know that you're going to absolutely love. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations for who you'd like me to interview next, please make sure you leave a nice comment below. Until next time, thank you for joining us and I hope you have an incredible day. Bye for now.